Thank you very much. I still haven't got a reply to that letter from NAMA. Um, I, I wrote them to, to uh, sell them my negative equity apartment, um, either for economic value or long-term economic value, but they weren't, um, they, they weren't prepared to purchase it in, in any case. Um, before I begin, I'd just like to thank the organisers for inviting me to speak um, at the McGill Summer School. Uh, today. Um, I am a McGill Summer School virgin. This is my first time here, um, but um, I'm delighted to be here and uh, I certainly have followed the debates earlier on in the week um, with great interest uh, and I do intend to spend a few more days up here, um, both attending some of the other sessions uh, and also doing a little bit of travelling around the area with, um, with Barry O'Neill, who's the, uh, uh, the Fine Gael candidate in, in the by-election. Uh, which may or may not happen. Um, uh, but I certainly do hope it does happen because at the very least it will be a, a, good boast, a good boost to the local economy. Um, I, I think when I was preparing this, uh, this, this paper, what I decided to do is something I should have done a long time ago, but it's something you can really only do during the recess. Um, I went back and I pulled out the debates from, from the day of the guarantee and the few days um, after the guarantee. Uh, and I'm ashamed to say that when you read those debates, it doesn't read very well. Uh, I don't think that historians are going to be very kind to the 30th doll. And it is remarkable to see how much revisionism has taken place since then, uh, both on the part of those who proposed the guarantee uh, and those who opposed it, and there are different reasons for doing so. Uh, at the time, as you'll probably remember, the government claimed that the Irish banks were solvent, that they were well capitalised, uh, I remember Brian Lennon describing them almost like orphans in the storm who had been afflicted by a, a temporary liquidity crisis caused by the collapse of a, of a bank in America. And if, you quote, if, I, if I can quote the Minister of Finance speaking in the Dáil, on the night of the guarantee, uh, he said, and he was sure about this, uh, the total assets of the six financial institutions concerned exceed their guaranteed liabilities by approximately 80 billion. By any me measure, there is a very significant buffer before there is any question of the state being called upon. Uh, since then, as we know, many of these assets, and of course in banking assets or loans, have been written down dramatically, uh, in some cases by as much as 78%. And the truth is, uh, is that our banks at that stage were not well capitalised, and some of them were even insolvent. And what we faced at that stage was not a temporary liquidity crisis, but an unfolding collapse of our financial system. It may well be the case that the cycle started as a liquidity problem in, in the United States a year or two previously, but certainly by the time of that night, uh, our banks uh, were in serious trouble. And contrary to some well-known commentators who, who, who speak on these matters, uh, the government narrative didn't go unchallenged uh, on the floor of the doll. Uh, on the night of the debate and on the following days, speakers including Richard Bruton, Michael Noonan, Joan Burton, Beverly Flynn, Michael Darcy, Tom Kitt, and myself all queried this government idea that there was an 80, million, 80 billion euro uh, buffer, but we were all brushed off by the Minister at the time, which is why I found it very hard to accept in recent days that in fact David Doyle, the Secretary General of the Department of Finance, was giving those exact same warnings as we were giving uh, in the days before the guarantee. And again in the same speech the Minister for Finance said, uh, the guarantee is not free and the taxpayer who ultimately underwrites the support will be remunerated for the value of the support provided. I stress that the provisions we are asking the House to approve are in no way a bailout for the financial system. Uh, and I think we can see uh, the validity of that somewhat later. Uh, on the same day, Brian Cowan uh, went even further. He said the Irish taxpayer will not be held liable in any way for any deficit that might occur in the event of there being a problem. We know as well that that was untrue that the bank guarantee and the subsequent recapitalizations uh, has cost us dearly uh, and probably the banking uh, bailout will cost us in excess of 30 billion, making it the most expensive uh, bank bailout in the world, certainly for our size. Um, and again, we were told on that same day by Brian Lenehan that the decision was informed by the advice and guidance of the governor of the central bank and the financial regulator. We were not told, however, that contrary advice was given to him in the days before uh, by Merrill Lynch. And indeed, Brian Cowan has kept up, kept up this deception in many ways. As recently as May, speaking in DCU, uh, he said, we know now that grave mistakes were made in the judgment of the capital adequacy of the banks and, that the, and the assessment of future loan losses. It is, however, important to note that no one in the independent authorities ever advised the government that the capital adequacy was not sufficient. Uh, clearly, Merrill Lynch and the Department of Finance do not fall into the definition of independent authorities in Brian Cowan's book. Perhaps if the Taoiseach had not become a solicitor, he would have made a very good Jesuit priest. 
Uh, during the debate on NAM, of course, uh, the government and its supporters claimed that it was the only show in town. Um, to quote Shea Cody, quoting Margaret Thatcher, uh, they told us there is no alternative. And I really do think that it is high time that the government published all the advice that they were given uh, on NAMA in the same way as they have on the bank guarantee in recent weeks. They should publish the entirety of the Bacon report, which suggested the creation of NAMA. Only 10 pages of that report have been made available to the public to date. And they should publish all of the advice given by independent uh, analysts and others. As a people, we have a right to know exactly what other options were considered uh, and why they were rejected. But what's probably most interesting about that dull debate, uh, which ran late into the night, and I remember it well, uh, was not what was said so much as what was not said. Um, there was mention of bankers' pay and bonuses. Uh, there was a call for better regulation for Fine Gael. There was a demand for an equity stake in the banks from the Labour Party. There was plenty of discussion about Ulster Bank, uh, which was excluded from the guarantee at the time. But there was almost no mention of Anglo-Irish Bank or, Nash, or, or, or Irish Nationwide. In fact, Anglo-Irish Bank wasn't mentioned at all uh, in the debate on the first night and was barely mentioned at all uh, in the days um, after. There was certainly no sense in the doll, believe it or not, uh, that there was anything particularly unusual about these banks. And it's extraordinary, really, how much has changed since then and how much we've revised in our own minds um, what we thought and what we said and what we did at that time. Uh, as well, reading through the debate and over those three days, uh, the word bondholder was never used once in the three days of debates, and nor was there any mention of subordinated debt. So it is extraordinary, really, to look back at those debates and see how much uh, things have changed since then. Um, looking back, though, I do think we can agree with Patrick Honan's assessment that an extensive bank guarantee was an appropriate response to the crisis. It was right to guarantee the deposit holders to ensure that there would not be a run on the bank but it was not necessary to cover the subordinated bonds, and I'm unconvinced that it was necessary to cover the existing bondholders. Covering new bondholders would have assured liquidity for the banks and would have exposed the taxpayer to much less risk. Uh, even to this day, the government argues that they have to cover all of the bondholders, uh, as these were the same individuals and institutions that lend the government money, and if there was any risk of the banks defaulting on them, it would make it harder for the government uh, to borrow money to fund services. But two years later, we can see that that really isn't the case. The decision of the government to take on our shoulders the debts of the banks has increased the cost of borrowing for the state. Government bond yields are now 5.5%, uh, up from 2.5% uh, only a few years ago, a rate at which Germany can still um, sell its debt. It's also brought our solvency as a nation into doubt, uh, as evidenced by Moody's decision to downgrade our sovereign debt some days ago, something which extraordinarily was welcomed by the Taoiseach. So I think if it is the case um, that the, the, the previous government uh, is to a large extent blamed for the recession, uh, I think we mustn't forget that the current one uh, bears the most responsibility for the costs and the long-term costs of the bank bailout. Uh, Mark Fielding talked about an albatross around our neck. In many ways we have two. We have the recession and we also have the long-term costs of the bank bailout. Um, in October, as you know, the courts are going to hear Paddy McKillen's challenge to NAMA. Uh, he argues that his company's loans are performing um, and that many of his loans are commercial and they have nothing to do with property development. Uh, and actually, he has a point. Um, and of the thousand or so developers and development companies that will go into NAMA, roughly 300 of those uh, are performing. Money they borrowed, money they're paying back. Um, and if he wins his case, we could have a serious problem because NAMA's business plan is based on the idea that in the first few years, it's the money from the performing loans that they're going to use to cover their costs. So if that case is successful, and if the performing loans are taken out of NAMA, it may well be the case that the government has to bail out NAMA itself next year, never mind, never mind having a situation whereby uh, it's going to turn a profit. Um, I do hope within, within a year, or maybe sooner than that, uh, Ireland will have a new government, uh, and one that is led by Fine Gael. Um, most of the decisions that the government has taken in relation to the banks uh, uh, can't be undone, but there are roughly eight policy changes which I think a new government could un undertake um, that would minimise the cost of, bank, of the bank bailout to the taxpayer, would restore public trust and would improve credit lines to business. And I'll go through those eight very briefly. Uh, first of all, we can make sure that the banking inquiry looks into the behaviour of the banks in the weeks after the guarantee, and this is crucial. There is considerable and growing anecdotal evidence that Anglo-Irish Bank used the cover of the guarantee 
to engage in reckless foreign currency speculation, a sort of double or quits game where they tried to, uh, to, to, try to minimize their losses. Uh, it's a gamble they lost. And if these stories are true, the abuse of the guarantee itself may have considerably increased the losses at Anglo-Irish uh, and the inevitable losses for the taxpayer. Another thing we can do is introduce proper legislation to provide for a resolution regime for insolvent banks. And it's extraordinary that two years into the banking crisis this hasn't been done. Um, and it's very simple. We could just copy and paste the legislation that was passed in the UK. And what a resolution regime would do, it would allow insolvent banks that are not systemic, like Anglo, for example, which is no longer systemic, the Irish economy, to be wound down legally, efficiently, and quickly. In this way, creditors and professional investors would take their fair share of the losses, as is normal uh, in, in, in business practice, or, or, or it's essentially the basic rules of capitalism. And in that way, we could save much of the six billion um, that, we, that the government is now committing to give to Anglo. Um, another thing we don't need to do is, is extend a blanket guarantee. Certainly from, from September 30th, we could just extend the guarantee to deposits and new bonds. There's no reason to extend the full guarantee. Uh, a fourth thing we can do is to amend NAMA to get rid of this uh, absurd concept of uh, long-term economic value, which uh, Mark Fielding spoke about. Only a quarter of the loans have actually been transferred to NAMA, so there is still time to get rid of this ridiculous concept of long-term e long economic value and only pay what the loans are worth. That may well mean that we have to take a bigger stake in, Anglo in, in AIB and Bank of Ireland, but so be it. At least we can sell that stake and make some money at, it, um, at, at a later stage. Another thing we can do is have greater risk sharing. At the moment, there's only a 5% risk sharing between NAMA and the banks. Uh, Patrick Honan himself suggested that it should be 10%. So that can still be done. And we can also have, uh, um, make NAMA fully transparent, uh, as Willie Sattery mentioned. Um, the sixth thing we can do is to remove over the course of the next two years all of the senior bank executives and board members who have not been retired or resigned. And I think that is key to restoring public trust in the banking system and answering any concerns about moral hazard. Uh, the seventh thing we can do is introduce uh, a loan guarantee system, similar to that in the UK or, or Chile, for example, which will tip the balance in favour of lending towards small and medium enterprises. Uh, I think that will work as a model for restoring credit to small business. The government's system of setting targets, I don't think, is going to work for the reasons outlined by previous speakers. Another thing we can do, and I think this is very important, uh, is we can heed the advice given by the IMF in recent days uh, that NAMA shouldn't hold back for too long uh, in selling off the, um, the properties and uh, the lands that fall into its ownership. Because I don't think that, there, that confidence in the property market or house prices, and therefore the entire economy, uh, will ever be restored so long as there's a big lump of, of, of NAMA properties uh, and, NAMA, uh, and NAMA land uh, to be sold off. Uh, and finally, let me say this. Um, I think it's fair to say that we've all had uh, a tough couple of years. But, all, but as a country, I don't believe that all is lost. Um, we are a small country, uh, but we're certainly not a small people. Uh, and as Mark was saying earlier on, uh, we have a very good spirit. And we've been through recessions and very hard times before, and we've never let it beat us. And I don't think we're going to do it this time. But to recover, we need to make sure that the right decisions are made by those who lead us. And in my view, this means taking the action that is necessary to bring the budget deficit under control. It means adopting a very different approach to banking that recognises that the interests of the Irish economy are not necessarily the same as the interests of the Irish banks. It means supporting enterprise by implementing a programme to restore cost and non-cost competitiveness and by introducing an SME loan guarantee. And it means stimulating the economy, as other speakers have said, uh, and as you know, Fine Gael proposes our New Era plan, which is using the proceeds of the sale of some state assets, certainly not all, uh, money from the pension fund, almost all of it which is invested overseas um, in buildings in Tokyo, much of that could be invested at home, uh, and also private pension funds, and using that money um, and investing it through the state enterprises uh, into building infrastructure in the new economy, things like broadband, green energy and clean water. That will create jobs, uh, 105,000 if you believe Simon Coveney, 94,000 if you believe Michael Noonan, it doesn't really matter, it will create a lot of jobs. Um, but more importantly, because they're infrastructural, it will lay the foundations for greater competitiveness and future sustainable economic growth. Uh, and these are all the things that can be done, uh, and I think they will be done. But all we need now is a government with the will and the mandate to do it. Thank you very much.